Let's start the third day of our journey. And uh, we start uh, with a part of what I call narrative TA. So, dream, storytelling, guided imagery, and all this stuff. And uh, we start by having a conversation on a dream later on. Uh, I asked Sandra whether she is willing to reflect a bit the work of yesterday. So I always am interested what is f- what is fo- what is following up uh, to a conversation. And she also said she had a dream, but we just maybe we'll look into that, but not do it too long because probably someone else also wants to have the chance to have a, a conversation on a dream. So. And, yeah, then we get a piece of ex- an example, and afterwards uh, we talk about this, and then I uh, do some lecturing on my ideas about narrative TA. That's uh, the first step this morning. morning. Is, this, is that okay? Does this sound right? Okay. Thank you. Come <coughs> Oh, is this too high for you? We can change it. Uh, if, if you are not comfortable, it's okay to change position. <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, interested in hearing what what went on uh, after our conversation and the discussion here. Yesterday. Um, I actually wondered why I felt a bit anxious Mm -hmm. yesterday and talking about the topic that we were talking about because um, the people I work with, this is the line trainers, um, their feedback to me has always been I've given them something that they haven't had for a long time. Mm-hmm. So I wondered why I, I felt anxious, and I think it's probably my own mm-hmm. frustrations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we will not go into the topic mm-hmm. back again. I, I, I'm just uh, wondering what, how you felt, what is going on after the conversation, what your ideas have been, and if you want to mention your dream from this night, this is interesting too. Okay, um, as I reflected back on um, what we talked about yesterday, um, I'm conscious that um, I I do kind of race to get things done, mm-hmm. like we discussed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm also conscious that sometimes I need to kind of hold back and let things be mm-hmm. and be in that dilemma mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm also conscious that I'm anxious when I am in that dilemma mm-hmm. so it's kind of feels a little bit uncomfortable mm-hmm. and can you, can you describe somehow how our conversation did affect you um, it almost felt like I was given permission to be okay mm-hmm. in that dilemma. Mm-hmm. And what does this affect? That I need to stop sometime. And it also feels at times that I need to brace and brace. This could help you to stop, mm. but it might not solve the drive behind. Mm. Okay, so there might be more work to be done. Mm. Okay, and you you had a dream this morning? I did. You, it was bizarre. <laughs> yeah, well, you. But first, take a breath. I have problems to look at you sitting so. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> if that the effect I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I take I take somehow I take it over what I imagine how, how it feels to sit that way. It's not very comfortable. Okay. Even if they are, if they are important things and there is still work to do, it's mm. no reason to be tired. Mm. That's life, mm. that you grow and have something before you. What should you do if everything is resolved? True. <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you about my dream. Yes. I dreamt that I was in a theatre mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was sitting, like I'm sitting now, watching myself dancing on a stage mm -hmm. and around me there were seats but they were covered and everything around me was dark and I was yeah. just sat watching myself dance but all I could see was the bottom half of myself yeah. with a beautifully um, a beautiful long skirt that was like really colourful mm -hmm. but I couldn't see the top half of me it mm -hmm. was like the light was shining on the bottom half of my skirt mm -hmm. and I was watching myself mm -hmm. and I couldn't see who I was dancing with but I could see the person just guiding me as I danced uh, on, the on the stage, stage. Okay. yeah and I was wearing a white top mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden a light came on the top mm -hmm. and the top was layered with a silk mm -hmm. a really flowing silk Mm -hmm. And part of the top, one of the layers, flitted off, mm -hmm. which is bizarre. Why do you call it bizarre? It sounds... It's somehow, when I listen to you, I think it's... Uh, yeah, it feels good. As if something new will start. Yeah, it feels like... It's, I say bizarre because it's not a kind of dream that I... Oh. So, so also in style of dream, mm. there's something new, not mm. a, not only in content. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. that's a good sign. Absolutely, and there was a point where I ha was holding a pair of shiny silver shoes, like ballet shoes, but they yeah. weren't. And on them was a rose mm -hmm. on the top of the shoes, and I was just stroking mm -hmm. the shoes. Wonderful. Yeah, and it um, to to me to me uh, it it uh, looks like if it's not everything seen right now, but it is on a good way. It's yeah. Something is unfolding. Would you agree to that? Is that for yeah. the same for you? Yeah. So just enjoy it. We should not talk too much about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you sat here in this dream this night, did you sit relaxed or tight? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was conscious that I was feeling, as I was stroking these shoes, I was conscious that I was feeling really emotional. Yeah. And I woke up and I had tears down my face. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, somehow it's, um, it's not um, uh, um, familiar to you. No. What happened? Mm. And uh, do, you, do you tend to, to tie it up if something moving but unfamiliar mm. is happening? Mm. Okay. Mm. So, whenever you will be in a situation where, and you need some of the sources from this stream, mm. it's not difficult to stroke your shoes. <laughs> Nobody will know what you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yeah. So, for me, also we don't still do not know too much about the content of Tilana mm -hmm. and this points we, we are working around. But this dream tells me we are doing something very good with, without knowing what it is exactly. But that's what the conclusion I would draw. How is it for you? You, you, you could, can feel like this or mm -hmm. different feelings or ideas?
And especially how I said, not only that there is something new in content. She she took over the theatre metaphor. Mm -hmm. This means she's <laughs> she's take her soul is taking in mm -hmm. <laughs> culture cultural views of this seminar. And um, something seems to uh, be different in the play, in the dream, and the style is new. And uh, if if there is a, uh, on the content level some new aspects, but it's the way of dreams, a person always dreams, then it's less as if this is the style of creating reality while dreaming changes and somehow she if you have looked at her eyes uh, it's an um, inspiring way of having creating new realities her soul is inspired that's the conclusion I would draw and it's okay for me just to leave it that way I'm only working in the Jungian sense with my judging function of my soul and say it's good we don't have to unwise it. Would you have permission also to do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Any questions, comments so far? I have a question about um, <coughs> the dilemma model yesterday. Yeah. Are you ready for that sort yeah. of question? Yeah. And I wondered how you connect it, if at all, with any TA concepts? As I told you in our private conversation, I forgot to mention it here. Um, when I started with the dilemma thing, I referred to two sources. One was the Bateson um, double bind theory, and the other one have been the corner games of Eric Byrne. Uh, but it was only the idea that. Um, Somehow you are in a point in reality where wherever you want to go, it's not possible. It's the feeling being caught. Mm -hmm. And the ideas I developed how to deal with a dilemma to have, certainly has a lot to do with the shift material of frame of reference and defining and redefining. Yeah, and, so, and you certainly can. Uh, um, put many of the things we do in TA terms, like permission, as she, she spontaneously did herself. And uh, maybe it's seldom in TA world that a T, a permission to be, to be caught in a dilemma, that this might be okay. You don't have to struggle to, to leave a dilemma, even because otherwise you would be in a the dilemma circle on a second level. Uh, is um, is very familiar, but to me it's as you I, I guess you remember but, uh, um, mentioned it yesterday. It's also okay to give uh, permission just to be stuck. So this has some relation to the inter theory. Not uh, if if the way out is not open, it doesn't make sense to fight. And this gives you more distance to think about, find out when is the right time and which are the right ways. And can we reframe the whole thing? Not uh, rearranging the problem, but rearranging the context that the problem will appear in a different light. And this is more systemic then. Mm -hmm. Not focusing on the object, but focusing on the way the object is appearing in reality, and how can we rearrange it? One thing is a different thing if you put it in a different frame of reference. It's not only explained differently, it is differently. It is different. You have any ideas beyond that, or, or hunches, or...? Um. I was thinking this morning that um, there was what was touched on about uh, it's okay 
for things not to be okay. And this is true okayness. Mm -hmm. is to accept what is not in Christ. Yeah. So this, I think, was one, one piece which was mentioned yesterday. And I did have another thought this morning, which is gone. <laughs> okay, when it comes when back, back come back, back was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if you're interested, I would be ready just to do a, um, a dream conversation. My approach, I call my approach as creative, creative dialogues on uh, using dreams. And I will later on explain more why not saying an analysis of dreams, but creative dialogues uh, starting with dreams.